I'm Jolene Engel with JoleneEngel.com and today I have such a treat for you. We normally, my husband and I normally do Ask Jolene Radio on podcast and today we're going to do a video for you. So without further ado, this is my beloved husband, Eric, and he's going to share the question from one of our readers. Okay, great. So the first question is, my husband is depressed because he can't seem to find a job that he wants and it's affecting his confidence and our marriage. He seems to be distant and does not want to share his financial burden with me and told me he would rather face his problem alone. What should I do and how should I be a supportive wife and yet give him the space so I don't belittle him as a man and provider for the family? He hardly smiles anymore and is distant to me and our son. Currently, I'm working. I'm a working mother and I'm earning to provide for our son. I do not ask him for money to provide for the family and give him space he requires. Sign the dilemma wife. Okay. And both husband and wife are believers. So the way that I want to tackle this question is to give you that background because in each situation that a reader writes in, I got to know if her, her man's walking with the Lord or not, because if they're not, they don't have the same authority in which they live by. But this one does. So um, I fully understand where this woman is coming from when her husband can't find a job. My man and I, we have been married for over 15 years. I've only known what it's like to be married to a self-employed man. And if you're married to a self-employed man, then you know that sometimes that means he's also unemployed. So I fully um, can understand where this wife is coming from in the sense of she's wanting to encourage her husband. Uh, my thought on, on the fact that he, the loss of his job, he can't find the job he wants, there's a lot of stuff going on over here. Um, when she said that he can't find the job that he wants, my response is, you're a believer, too bad. You know, you're required, according to the word of God, to provide for your, your household. Now, obviously, if he's not a believer, I would come at that a little bit differently. But in this context, He's commanded to provide for his family. And if he doesn't want to go work at the local Home Depot or Walmart because it's too beneath him, um, that, that's, that's not, uh, in my opinion, that's not good enough. But, you know, a, a wife coming at her husband saying, you, 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 that, that's not going to win him over. Okay. Uh, maybe what she can do is to go talk to um, some of his friends, say, hey, how can I encourage him? Maybe his brothers in the Lord could come alongside of him and just kind of spur him on to go do whatever it takes to provide for his family. The first thing she needs to do is go to him and ask him how she can encourage him. She might not know. Right. And he might not have ever thought that that was even an option. Right. Because right. he feels alone. A, a big part of what men... What defines men is what they do for work and how they provide for their family. And when that stops, they feel worthless. Right, right. Well, and let me say something on that because you could be married to a man who has a job that he can't stand. He hates it. And he's dying inside, but he's still getting up every single day, putting his boots on to go provide for his family. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this situation. I know when my husband, it seemed like we went through a period in our life where everything he seemed to touch just fell apart. Um, it, it was just incredible that as hardworking as he is and, and all the different paths that he was taking, it would just crumble right before us. So my heart as a wife was... How can I help you? How can I encourage you? And this wife has said that she's trying to do that, but he's shutting her out. And I, I guess my first question to ask is, why are you shutting me out? Well, and a, a big problem here is that he doesn't have to go to work. Yeah, that's another part. Because the, he's being provided for. Yeah, yeah. And as long as he's being provided for by her, then he can sit there and be as picky as he wants. Now, I agree with you. Bottom line He's got to provide for his family. And that means do whatever it takes. Right. And a lot of times we have to do things that we don't want to provide for our family. Now, I wouldn't say ultimately he has to live his entire life till death just doing what he doesn't like to right, do. Right. But right now, if he's got to put food on the table, that's got to be a big part of it. And since she's bringing in the bacon, right. bringing home the bacon, right. he doesn't have to. And he can sit there and say, well, uh, I'm depressed. I can't find the job I want. And boo-hoo. Right. You know, right. but she's she's facilitating that. Right. You know, and a lot of times, because I would get readers asking me, you know, what did we do when we basically didn't have any money coming in? And, and I kind of felt like um, 
missionaries within Southern California because God kept moving us so much. And we were just really relying on, we, we were doing our part to try and bring in the, the income. My husband was, and I was trying to be the wife that God called me to be. But at the same time, you're just like, okay, Lord, we're following you and nothing's happening. And in this instance, I know she wrote that she's earning, um, she's a working mom and she's earning to provide for their son. And I thought, well, that kind of struck me as odd. Like, what do you mean that you're providing for your son? It's a family unit. Um, your, your heart, I know for me as a wife, it would be to encourage my husband and say, hey, how can I help you in this? And I know that some husbands have said when they've lost their job or their hours have been cut or whatever's taken place, they've turned to the wife and said, can you go and work and we could build this together? Those were some paths that some couples took. But my heart is when I look at this, how come there's such a big separation there? Where Where's the break? And I know when we've gone through our stuff, you know, for us, God called us to just live that life of faith where I remained in the home and Eric continued to find work as much as he could. And I realized that that's not everyone's path, but in the same breath, the man is still called to provide. So you've got to kind of take that step back and say, okay, wife, am I, because a lot of times we respond out of fear. We start freaking out. There's no money coming in. And it's just like, am I going to be reduced to eating beans and rice? And we were. Um, we were reduced to eating things that I didn't want to eat, but God thought we should be eating those things because when, when food so- shows up on your doorstep, you could either say with an ungrateful heart, I don't want this, or you could be thankful. So sometimes wives out of fear, um, we, we go out and try and fix things when really what God's trying to do is a work in your marriage and a work maybe in your, your heart or in your man's heart. But we want to, kind of come in and save the day if our husband has stumbled. So you, you need to ask yourself that question. Why are you in the statement was, I'm here to provide for my son, why it's not a family thing? There, You, you need to start connecting okay. between husband and wife. So let me address that because ultimately the problem probably goes a little farther back than the job issue. The, the, the main problem is, is that they're not on the same page. And if you're not on the same page as your wife and husband, then you guys, you're coming to different conclusions in your mind and you can never come together. And so you think he's not doing this, she's not doing that. And so you go your own way. And ultimately, they first have to come together as to what they believe their roles are and what they believe should happen in the home. Once they agree on that, then they can go further and talk about, okay, then if you're the breadwinner, husband, then this is my role and this is how I'm going to help you and how can I help you better and how can I encourage you, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that's the first thing. Probably the next thing I would say is your husband was broken. What did you do? Yes, my husband was broken. Um, And actually we we say um, broken husband. I wrote a post on that and and within the series, there's a couple things in there. So I'll put those links at the bottom of this video. Um, You know, the trials that we went through, yes, it caused him to be broken, but the, the beauty of the brokenness, we knew where our roles were. Um, she's trying to encourage her husband to be a provider, but yet she's the breadwinner. So there's a, there's a lot of um, issues taking place there. For me, it was really kind of easy because I knew my role. My role was I'm commanded um, to love my husband and to love my children and to keep the home, Titus 2, 3 through 5. That's, that's where the, it comes from. So I knew going into the marriage when we... Um, you know, when we got engaged and stuff, that those were the roles that I was going to take. And when we lost the home, when we couldn't afford to live in our rental, when, you know, no health insurance, nothing, when we had nothing, my convictions didn't change. Just because our bank account changed, my biblical convictions didn't change. And those are some hard words for a wife to hear because we're freaking out. So what happened to our relationship? Our relationship didn't change because I looked at him broken and I and I knew I'm like, you know what, what is going to soothe his soul? It was going to be the word of God. And so what I did was I spent a great amount of time reading the word to him, you know, throughout the day. Um, I would might be in my devotions. And at one point we were both reading the book of Job and I'd walk in. I'm like, hey, did you read this? And, and so I would just try and encourage him with the word of God. And because he's a believer, this man's a believer, she could do the same thing. But he might be rejecting it. He might be having a point where he's just mad at God. And that's when you, as a wife, you pray. But you have to come together as husband and wife and say, you know what? We need to work this out. I I, I don't believe that he's allowed to go stick his head in the sand. 
he's a believer. So you as a wife, I as a wife had to look at him and say, you know, he's broken, but yet he wants to do the right thing. So I could encourage him. But then there were other times that we both saw our own little pity parties. And we'd say to each other, have you talked to God about that? Because we knew, we knew that in our flesh, um, we weren't maybe handling it well. But instead of, you know, coming down with a hard rebuke, we just gave this ne- this gentle admonishment of we realize we're both having a hard time with this. And at the same token, I'm not his savior. He's not mine. You know, go talk to Jesus about this. And after you've heard from him or sat with him or prayed with him, come share your thoughts with me. So there was this constant um, sharpening of iron. But then there were times when I saw, okay, he's not in a good mood today. This is not a good day for me to maybe come in and sit and talk to him about, hey, your buddy Job down the street, down the way. You know, a wife could have that sense of, you know, it's just time to pray pray for him and not have the conversation. The conversations might come a little bit later when you could realize that, you know, he might receive these words. So I just really kind of looked at Eric to find out where where was his state that day. Almost every day I kind of asked you, so how you doing today? How you doing today? You know, and... Some days it was not good. I, I remember one day in particular, we just talked about the other day. We uh, we were in the rental home at the time and it was raining out, cats and dogs, just raining constantly. And we, we had nothing, you know, the we didn't have rent money. We didn't have food money. The utilities, I think, were on the verge of being turned off. My son um, had holes in the bottom of his shoes, on the soles of his shoes, and he'd go out and he'd come home with wet socks because it was that bad. He's like, Mommy, I need new shoes. And I'm just in tears. I'm dying inside. And I knew my husband was dying inside because we're doing everything we could to um, take care of the family. You know, we'd go through the house and, oh, well, here's a crystal vase that we got for our wedding. Yeah, let's sell that on eBay. And then I'd go through the cupboards. Oh, here's a juicer we haven't used in a while. Let's sell that because that brought in money for our utilities and money for our food. I mean, it was a hard time, friend. It was no no cakewalk by any means, but there was a beauty in that brokenness. And that's what I want to encourage the wives, whether your husband is unemployed or lost his some hours, or maybe you're in the mundane right now. I'm telling you, the storm's coming because if you're living for Jesus, the enemy's coming after you. But anyway, so back to the story, my husband walks in and he's just a broken man. He's defeated on, on so many levels. And he looks at me with tears in his eyes. And you know, you're married to a man. He probably ain't crying that often. And I don't see my man cry that often. And he says to me, you're all I've got with tears coming down. And I'm just like, and I'm at a strong place at this point. You know, usually he might be down in the pit and I might be up here or vice versa. Very few times in our marriage has it been this, we're at the same place. And I looked at him, I said, I ain't all you got. You got Jesus, you got the living water. Okay, let me bring it back to the word. So a wife who is walking in the Lord, who's trying to encourage her husband, you you leave those notes. I would leave notes for him. I believe in you. God's with us. Um, Just a lot of different stuff. Yeah, but what a testimony that I was able to say you're all I got. A lot of guys don't feel like they even have that. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, how important is it for the wife and, and I know you see a guy down, you want to say, hey, get up. What's your problem? Right. right? right. But, it, you know, you don't want to kick the wounded. You don't want to kick the wounded. So that's why you have to be careful. But at the same time, in this scenario, he's pushing her away. And he's a believer. And he's a believer who says, well, I don't want just any job. I want that job. And yet she's carrying a huge burden. Right. She's the red warrant winner wanting to encourage him. And he's saying no. And it's just like you in that scenario... There has to be some admonishment there. There's got to be, hey, love, of course. hey, love, let's let's make this work. Let's have that Christ-centered marriage. Let's, you know, push forward together. And if he's, you know, kind of saying, no, I'm not interested, I don't want it, I would ask him why. Why, 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 why? Well, and so what can a wife do? She can say, hey, let's go for a walk. Let's pray together. Right. Let's uh, Let me encourage you. Let me, let me pray for you right now. I mean, right. you know, what's the guy going to do? He's going to... If he has half a brain, he's going to respond to that. Right. A man in that position, and, and you know, I'm not a man, but, you know, I can look at you and, and realize, you know, that you're going through the shame, the guilt, the condemnation. You're going through all sorts of emotions that a woman doesn't normally see that in a man. So for me, I kind of would let you have 
you know, your time away, whether, you know, I saw you had to have your pity parties and your tantrums, just like I have to have my pity parties and my tantrums because we're real. It's, it's our feelings and our emotions. But as a husband, they're not nearly as vulnerable and transparent as a wife. So you kind of have to walk this discerning um, tightrope in your marriage to see where's he at. And so a simple thing that you could say to a man in any situation, and he's not wanting to let you in, is how can I pray for you today? Okay, that's it. Stop speaking. How can I pray for you today? Don't give him any suggestions. You're not his mother. You're his lover. You're, encur you're, you're his encourager. You're his friend. Um, you're his sister in the Lord. And you're the one who's going to intercede on his behalf. And he may not have the answer right now as you ask him that. But hopefully he'll come back to you later because that's going to break down his walls of the pride that he's put there. Because in this, I see a man that... Um, he, he's he's got too much shame and guilt going on. I see that. That's right. why he's pushing her away. Right. And and ultimately, just something as simple as praying for him and telling him, I'm praying for you. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. going to think, wow, you know, someone someone's in my corner. Because right. he doesn't feel like anyone's in his corner right, right now. Right, right. I mean, anytime my husband would go out on to bid a job or to maybe meet a potential client... Um, sometimes I would gather the kids around, come on, we're going to pray for daddy right now. And I would lead the prayer of, you know, because he's going into battle. Okay. And you got to remember something here. This is a spiritual battle that he's going th through and it would be best if in your heart, I could tell the wife's heart is I want to be in his corner. I want to be not only just the, the cheerleader, but sometimes the wife goes into battle, um, in even a stronger way because, I know when we were going through all the financial stuff, I was in a much stronger place spiritually than where my husband was because I had just come out of like eight to 10 years of just hardcore trials in my own physical um, well-being of my my body. And so it's like the Lord prepared me to um, be that warrior, to lift him up and to encourage him and say, hey, you know what? I'm with you. We'll do this together. And... That was kind of my role. And prepared you and I for this video. Oh, and prepared us for this video. I mean, in, in so many areas where your man's in the pit right now and, you know, maybe he just needs a friend to sit in that pit with him. I'd ask him that. Or maybe he needs to help you pull him out of that pit. You and Jesus, you could do it. But really, you need to get to the heart of your husband. And, and maybe that could just be, hey, I made your favorite meal tonight. I made you your favorite dessert. You know, I wore your favorite, you know lingerie, whatever, whatever it is that makes him feel loved, I would connect on those levels first and then try and move into the heart of why he's got his walls up. Any okay. other thoughts? No, I think that's great. Okay, we're out. We're Eric and Jolene. I'm Jolene Engel from JoleneEngel.com.